Jesus, right in that vein. The Father is releasing three things in this house on today. And not only in this house, but you, where you stand. And I ask that you come into agreement. The Lord is releasing glory on this morning. The Lord is releasing, hallelujah, Lord Jesus, clarity on this morning. And lastly, the Lord is releasing the latter rain. The Lord says that he is releasing his glory through you. Glory is God's manifested word. Hallelujah. The fulfilling of what it is he promised is being released under this anointing. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. The Lord is binding up confusion and raising clarity concerning decisions that you need to make. And third, the Lord is releasing the latter rain. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. In biblical times, the latter rain was the equivalent of money. They needed the rain to reap the harvest. He is releasing the latter rain over your life. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and receive that prophetic word for yourself. I receive it. Father, we thank you for speaking into our midst. We thank you for entering into this place and into our homes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for hovering over us. We love you, Lord. Come on, just right where you are. Right where you are. Just begin to give them. Give them. Give them the fruit of your lips. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's in our hearts, God? We, we speak it out unto you. We say we love you, Lord. We say you're awesome. We say you're mighty. We say you're kind. We say you're a great father. You're an awesome redeemer. Yes, you are, Lord. Hallelujah.
this place and feel the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overwhelmed by your presence, by your presence, Lord.
this fear. No tananashi and troubled on this morning you have been troubled troubled in your mind troubled in your heart and the answer is in his presence there's even been a fighting and a warring it's hard for you to pray sometimes it's hard for you to get in your word the answer is on your knees before the father in his presence and I bind up every distraction and every high thought that tries to cast itself before God I decree and declare that it is an ease to rest at the feet of the Father. Your answer rests in Him. The trouble stops at His feet. The worry, the anxiety, the torment, the shame, the guilt. You have a place to put it. Hallelujah. Ease at your feet, Lord. May that be at ease at your feet, Lord, in your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We bless you, God. 
Aleluia. 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 We want to welcome each of you for joining us on this morning. And first and foremost, I want you to know that your powerhouse family loves you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We thank God that you chose to worship with us on this morning. We embrace you. We want you to know that there is a place for you here, that whoever you are and wherever you come from, whatever your background is, you are invited in this house. You are welcome. All of you is welcome. And so we invite you and we thank you for sharing your Sunday morning with us. Amen. Amen. So really quickly, I know it's an awesome word from the man of God, so we're going to get through these announcements. Uh, quick reminder, if you recently joined the Powerhouse Global family and you want to sign up for new members class, shoot an email to admin at phglobalnetwork.org. We'll get connected with you and we want to stay in touch. It's so important to us. Um, Habitation, Indianapolis is coming up this July, and it'll be here before you know it. It's July 23rd through the 27th. Go ahead and get your tickets at phglobalnetwork.org. It'll be here before you know it. Coming up in September, we have our Exusia Prophetic Conference in Chicago, Illinois. It is such a blessing every year. We're going to have some exciting guests. Uh, you'll also get some insight about life. The awesome thing about every encounter with Powerhouse is so well-rounded something for your spirit, something for your mind, something for your emotions, some direction and clarity. So please join us in Chicago, September 24th through the 27th. Uh, each event will have its own celebration. Habitation will have Black Tie Gala. It'll be that Friday the 24th. And then uh, Exusia will have an all-white party kicking off that Thursday. That'll be September 24th. Don't forget phglobalnetwork.org is where you can register for all these events and cop those tickets, amen. And right now, I want to bring up the angel of this house, our apostle, Keith McQueen. We thank you, and we thank God for you, amen. God bless you, God bless you. Listen, family, I sense uh, an unusual anointing here today, and I'm so grateful for what God is releasing in the midst of his people. Uh, I heard the Lord speak something to me that I want to release to you before we proceed for. And the Lord brought my mind to the book of Judges and the story of Gideon. The Spirit of the Lord showed me how Gideon started out with 32,000 and then the Lord took him to 10,000 and then the Lord took him to 300. The Spirit of the Lord said unto him that I'm going to cause you to win the battle, but you're going to win this battle with less than what you think you need. It was Gideon that looked over at the other army and they were greater than his 32,000 and he said God my problem is that I don't have enough but the Lord said to him your problem is that you have too much I am going to accomplish this with you and through you with less than what you think and I came to let somebody know and I sense this heavily in my spirit I need to tell somebody that's watching me that disaster minus 30,000 equals God disaster minus 30,000 equals God. The Lord said, I'm getting ready to do something through you, your family, in your life. And God said, I'm going to accomplish what you want, what you have requested, and what you need with what you have. You don't have to worry. You don't have to fear. You don't have to friend. The Lord said, the Spirit of the Lord says, I'm going to do it. And you don't have to worry about the money that you used to make you don't have to worry about the house you used to live in you don't have to worry about any cutbacks the Lord said it wasn't a cutback it was a setup for a divine appointment for increase the enemy has no authority over your future over your destiny but the Spirit of the Lord says I'm going to accomplish more with less hit about three people and say less is more go in your house and look at someone and say less is more 
I need 20 people to type that. Say less is more. Less is more. I know it seems like you got less friends, but the Lord said you're getting ready to have more peace. I know it seems like you got less money, but the Lord said you're going to have more assets. I know it seems like you've got less peace and the enemy's attacking you on every side, but when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying you're getting ready to move forward with less. Everybody in your house, take a step forward. The Spirit of the Lord said you're getting ready to move forward with less. I'm getting ready to do more. Come on, give me this camera. Zoom into my face. The Spirit of the Lord said you're going to do more with less. The Spirit of the Lord said I'm going to do more through you. The Spirit of the Lord said I'm going to do more in you. There is more. There is more. Disaster minus 30,000 equals God. The Lord said it's going to be a supernatural miracle. You will not accomplish this by your flesh. You will not accomplish this through the ways you are accustomed. But behold, 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 behold. I do a new thing. Save the Spirit of God. I'm getting ready to do it. Somebody say less is more. The Lord said if I didn't allow you to lose that job, then you would have told all your friends that I did this because of the amount of money I make. If I didn't allow your resources to be cut off, then you would have told all your people, well, these are my connections, and this is how you do it, and this is how it's going to happen. No, the Lord said, when you come out of this, the only thing you're going to be able to say is to God be the glory for the things that he has done. Hallelujah. Some of you don't even realize it, but even in the midst of a pandemic, the stock market, stocks went down to a low rate. And the Lord said, some of you missed your moment. That was your moment to buy. God is saying, less is more. Because there's going to be a divine shift, a divine moment where I'm going to bring increase. Woo. Father, we bless you. Woo. God, I praise you. Oh, my goodness. Help me, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, I feel a praise in my soul, but listen, I got to move on. I want to tell you this. God is up to something great for you. God is up to something good for you. Why should I worry? Why should I fret? Look at all the ways he's made and every promise met. I look to the hills. Yamos. But it's coming my help. good reason why I should worry. Give me a good reason why I should be afraid when the enemy comes against me. The Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard. Tell your neighbor, tell your cat, tell your dog all is well. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Listen. I promise you. And he that have begun a good work in you shall perform it, shall complete it. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. So we give the Lord our worship. We're going to get ready to move on. You know the conferences we have. Habitation, July 23rd through the 26th. Plan to fly it on the 27th. We got so many registrants this uh, week. We're so excited about those that are coming forward. Exousia, July 24th to the 27th. I'm sorry, September 24th to the 27th in Chicago, Illinois. You don't want to miss our Exousia conference. You don't want to miss Habitation that will be in July here in Indianapolis. You don't want to miss what God has in store. We're looking forward to the grand opening of Powerhouse Church of Boston in August. You don't want to miss that. We got some exciting things coming forward. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I love the Lord. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, I went back and I looked. I went back and read the testimonies. I went back and I looked at what the Lord said he was going to do this year. And I came to let you know that in a pandemic, he is still performing his word.
miss a few. I'm counting 16. We receive it, Lord. We receive it, Lord. We receive it, Lord. Vanessa Waters, by the end of this live, you're coming under a new anointing. And you're coming under new strength today in your body. Hallelujah. There's still room. Those of you that are tithing, go ahead and type tithe. We're getting ready to say our confessions. We counted 17 so far. Let's get ready to declare our confessions. Woo! What a great anointing to decree in. There is no doubt in our mind that we are under an open heaven. We know it. The Lord has rent the heavens for us and we are confident that his presence is here. Let's prepare to decree this. One, two, three. As we receive today's tithe, offerings, and first fruits, we declare that as a church we have 2020 vision. We call in all the necessary finances to build this church. We declare every powerhouse campus is out of debt and owners of much land, financial resources, and great wealth. We decree over every powerhouse family, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and return, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, Finding money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessings and increase, heavens open, earth invaded, storehouses unlocked, and miracles created, dreams and visions, angelic visitations, declarations, impartations, and divine manifestations. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs, that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Money coming to the body of Christ. Money coming to me now. You are bringing me into my wealthy place. Father, we glorify you. We thank you that you have dwelt wondrously with us. We thank you that the windows of heaven are open. We glorify you now. And we thank you, God, that you are releasing supernatural blessing and prosperity upon your people. Spirit of God, I ask right now under this anointing that you will give forth financial miracles to your people that are watching us as they sow. We glorify you for it now in Jesus Christ's name. All that agree said is so. And so it is. You can give via Cash App at Cash Sign, PH Global Network at PayPal, paypal.me slash Powerhouse Church Ending, or online at www.phglobalnetwork.org and click the Give tab. Let's be a blessing and sow now. We're going to sow and then we will come right back in a moment. Don't miss this powerful word.
over. Jump over to Jeremiah real quick. Jeremiah 29 and 13. And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. You shall seek me and find me when you search for me. God, I bless you with all your heart. I want to minister from this subject. Let the seekers arise. Let the seekers arise. Father, I bless you now for this anointing that's here. God, send a supernatural anointing upon me that makes preaching easy. Let the prophetic word flow and cut asunder every bondage, every chain, every stronghold. God, even the thick part, God, that won't break, it seems like it just won't lose its hold. Let it be broken by the power of the prophetic word. Have your way in this place and through every home that is watching us live. And we will be careful to give you all the glory, honor, and the praise in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. We say it is so, and so it is. I want you that are watching, just say or type, let the seekers arrive. Those that are watching us, go ahead and share this, share this now, so we can loose this word in your families, homes, friends, uh, 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 loved ones. We sent something great happening here. 
I want to share something with you. We have been in a prophetic time, a prophetic season that the Lord has been gearing us up for revival. The Spirit of the Lord has been preparing us literally. For those of you that are not members of Powerhouse Church, we have been in this posture of preparation probably for the last year. Uh, God started dealing with us last summer about revival. I began to teach a series on revival. The Lord then took us into a series on mantles and many other dynamics concerning the release that he had for the body of Christ. But I heard the Spirit of the Lord begin to share something with me coming into this year, and I shared this on some of the broadcasts. You can go watch them on our YouTube page, but the Lord shared with me that this pandemic is getting ready to give birth to the revival that is going to take place in the earth realm. I have heard as a third generation, really fourth generation Pentecostal, I have heard the word revival since I was a kid. We would do what we call revivals and we would shut the doors of the church and bring everybody in literally seven days a week. And people would come in and we would have uh, preachers and evangelists. We would have itinerants that would come in and they would preach to us and preach to us and preach to us. And what I was taught, and some of you may uh, find similarity with what I'm about to say, what I was taught growing up was that revival was a time where the Lord would save the unsaved. Revival was a time where we expected people to come and be baptized, be filled with the Holy Ghost. It was literally a time set aside for an evangelistic work. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, revival is not for the sinner man. Revival is not for the sinner man. Revival is for the saint. I need you to hear me. I'm going to say something that's going to mess with a lot of your theology. You can never truly fully know God. It is impossible to fully know God. Whenever you have a revelation of God, it is always partial and never complete. The Bible says we prophesy in part and we know in part. God reveals himself through different generations, dispensations to different people based on, watch this, his manifold desire in the earth realm. God reveals himself through different time frames, time periods. And watch this. It is impossible to fully know God. Why? Because he is Alpha and Omega. Now listen, you cannot assign to God a beginning alone or an ending. You can't do that. He is both the beginning and he is the ending. What does that mean? In every moment, God is constantly beginning and ending. Beginning and ending. It is a continuous cycle. There was an evangelist that was popular in the 90s. I believe Jesse Duplantis that said something very profound. That he had a vision and was caught up in the heavens. And when he went into the heavens, he saw angels that circled around the face of God day and night continuously and he asked one of the angels why are they doing that and the angel said to him the reason why they are doing that is because every time they come across his face they see another side of God that they have never seen before he is constantly beginning and ending and revealing himself it is impossible to fully know everything that there is to know about God now why is is this important because when you deal with revival revival is not watch this God changing it is God revealing and changing us to handle the capacity of what it is that he is releasing God does not need to change he does not change he says behold I am the Lord God I am the same yesterday today and forevermore as I have been I forever shall be watch this what he is saying is I have to take you through seasons where I upgrade your capacity to handle what it is that I'm about to release to you. Let me give you an example. I have uh, probably one of the latest iPhones and with one of the latest iPhones everybody was posting uh, 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 I think it was Animojis and they were using Animojis and I was trying to figure out why didn't I have that and watch this. I became aware of something significant. I didn't have it because I did not participate in the update that the iPhone was trying to give me. 
can I share something with you? There are periods of updates that are released to your iPhone. And if you don't participate in the updates, if you don't participate in the upgrades, you're going to find yourself with a system that is incompatible with what it is that you're trying to download. What has happened to the body of Christ, I want to share with you, is we have had a system that is incompatible with prophetic downloads that God has been trying to release to us. And so now God has us dispersed and scattered so that he can upgrade us to the next level and dimension that he is calling us to. Can I share something with you? Revival is not for the sinner man. Now watch this. There are some people that have that revelation and they think that revival, watch this, is for uh, uh, us to restore systems, structures, and ways of approaching God. So when many people do revivals, they'll say we're going to go back to the old time way because we want old time power. You cannot assign any type of time frame to a move of God because anything that comes from God is eternal. It is not trapped by chronos. It operates by kairos. It is released in the earth realm. Watch this. Based upon the attack, the season, and uh, 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 the dimension that the body of Christ is operating in. So whenever God sends revival, he is not trying to restore the way that we did things. He is trying to restore the posture of our hearts. Can I share something with you that is very important for you to know? When God was ready to do a new thing in the life of Elijah, the Bible said in 1 Kings 19 that he said, I'm getting ready to release something. I'm going to reveal something and I'm going to do something supernatural. The Bible said in 1 Kings 19 that when Elijah went to see what God was going to do, he went to the wind, but he could not find God in the wind. He went to the earthquake and he could not find God in the earthquake. He said, I looked at the mountain, but I could not find God in the mountain. This was the issue. God said... I have revealed myself to you this way up until now, but I am putting you in a transitional season. I feel the fire of God because I'm getting ready to reveal myself to you in a way that you have never seen before. And the reason why I'm going to do this in a way that you have never seen before is because old methods will not defeat new battles. In order for me to take you into a realm and into a dimension that you have never been before, I have got to hide myself in a place that will stir the seek on the inside of your spirit. So this is what happens. Many people, and I see this all the time, as I counsel people in the prophetic, as I counsel people spiritually, those are the preachers, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Many people will get into a space where they feel like they have backslidden. They feel like their hope is lost. They feel like they are bored with the system of church. And they feel like they are over uh, 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 the dynamics of what has always been. And many of them will feel I must be backsliding maybe something is wrong maybe I'm in a wrong place is it something I ate did I do something have I lost my anointing have I lost my gift no what is happening is your capacity has increased now let me tell you something if I am using a teacup and I fill that teacup up with water it doesn't take much for me to fill that teacup up but if I remove the water and put it into a bowl it is going to require more of an outpour in order for that bowl to feel full. Whenever God increases your capacity, God must also increase your ability to seek after him, which means that God will no longer do you the way that God did you when you first got saved. When you first got saved, all you had to do was pray and everything came together. When you first got saved, it seemed like if you just thought Jesus, your body would get healed. God would heal you of a headache. Things would just show up and manifest right there in your front yard. But the Lord is saying in this season, I am doing something something different. I am doing a new thing in you, but before I can do a new thing in you, I've got to shift the capacity that you are on. I want about three people to receive that and shout capacity shift. The Lord is shifting your capacity to handle what it is that the Lord is calling for you to hold. You cannot have an assignment to nations, an assignment to a generation, and operate from a low place. Can I tell you something? The power source has to be 
compatible with the electrical function of the edifice. So whenever God is about to elevate the level of power that you are able to release and transmit, he has to cause, watch this, a refurbishing of the electrical structure of the edifice. What God is saying is now I've got to put you in a place to where you can handle the level of power and anointing that is about to come through you. Now watch this. There are some people that will struggle to receive this because many of us have only been taught that what we need to do is get saved. The only thing we need to do is know Jesus. The only thing we need to be introduced is be introduced to Jesus. And baby, if you just get introduced to Jesus, everything is going to be all right. Can I share something with you? If you be honest with me today, the real warfare did not start until you told God yes. The real warfare did not start until you made a decision to surrender to God. And can I tell you something? And some of you are religious people. You're not going to like this and this is okay. I did not have a miserable life of sin. I did not. I did not have a miserable life of sin. I like some of the stuff I was doing. You're not going to say man, that's all right. I like some of the stuff I was getting into. I knew how to do it and I knew how to do it well. But can I share something with you? When God shifts your capacity, it is not that I don't want to do it anymore. I just found out that I'm capable of more than what I have locked myself into. See, contentment is the curse of one that cannot see. But the moment that you get a new perspective and you become aware of who you are, you are no longer content with just operating in the mundane activities of life, but you begin to say something. There has to be more. Listen, I need to share something with you in this season. You've got to get to a place in your spirit where you recognize that if God is constantly beginning and ending, meaning he is constantly being revealed and revealing himself, then maybe, perhaps maybe, if I am made in his image and his likeness, I am evolving, I am changing, I am expanding, I am increasing, and I am no longer the person that I used to be. Can I share something with you? People that refuse to grow, progress, or change are dangerous. They are dangerous. It is a dangerous thing to be around people that refuse to change the way they talk, to change the way they act, to change the way they walk, to change the way they interact. At some point, you have got to make up in your mind that I am no longer operating from the limits and the limited perspective of who I used to be. I am growing and I I am changing. As a matter of fact, can we pause right here? And I need about 10 people that are watching me now to praise God for change. Praise God for progress. Praise God. Listen, if you stay in the opinions of the people that are stuck, the enemy will make you hate your own growth. But at some point, you have got to make up in your mind and say, if I'm ever going to get from here to there, I've got to be okay with change. The Lord is upgrading me to handle the downloads he's putting in my life. Can I share something with you? And this is, listen, this might, this might make you really uncomfortable, but in this season I just can't do Christians uh, and I can't do church folk that refuse to change. I can't do that. Listen, now I'm not talking about people that just got saved yesterday, but I'm talking about people that's been saved for 20 years and you still got a bad attitude and you still don't know how to talk to people and you still don't know how to act. It's okay, listen, I'm going to say this. You still don't know how to interact with folk. You still got to be told how to apologize to people. You still don't know how to say I'm sorry. You still don't know how to recognize that you are still in the process and God is working on you. Can I tell you something? We have traded in our posture to become imposters. And the Lord said that many people are trying to access levels of anointing and gifting and power, but they refuse to mature. Whenever a church hungers, hungers for the supernatural more than we hunger for character, more than we hunger for revelation, we become demonic and idolatrous because whenever you refuse to be processed but you want access without process you're going to look for a shortcut and can I share something with you about the enemy he always has a shortcut the enemy always has a shortcut the enemy always has a counterfeit the enemy always has something that looks like it's going to get you there a lot quicker but if I could tell you something and share something with you your 
your destiny is worth waiting on God for. The thing that God is going to release you for is worth staying in the process of it. You cannot in this season surround yourself with people that are still operating in the level that they were operating in five years ago. Now listen, I believe, I believe that some things take time. But listen, baby, if the deliverance take all your life, you ain't going to ever see your destiny. At some point, you've got to own responsibility. I can't hear nobody in this room. You've got to own the fact that if this thing is going to change and this thing is going to move, there are some decisions you've got to make. Now, somebody's watching me right now and they're saying, you know what? I hear you, apostle, but I just can't leave him. I can't leave her. I can't leave him because he got that good good. I, listen, I hear you. I can't leave her because she know how to do this, that, and a little bit of that too. But can I share something with you? You can leave her. I promise you, you can. Because if you found out she was cheating on you, you'd be out the door by tomorrow. You ain't going to say man. If you found out he was cheating on you, you'd be out the door by the night. Can I tell you something? You've got the power to get up and go if you want to. You've got the power to move in your destiny if you want to. The Lord is saying that you're not stuck. Stuck is, is an illusion of the mind. The Lord said that I've given you the power to enter into your next destiny and your purpose. But you are not going to get there surrounding yourself by people with potential but no power. At some point, I need to see you manifest that potential. I hear the Lord telling me to stop right there. You cannot invest in people based on potential alone. We have got to see some fruit out of you before we tie ourselves to you. I've got to see some fruit from you before I'm able to license and ordain you. I've got to see some fruit. It's quiet on this live. I can feel some of y'all in the spirit. Can I tell you something? There is something wrong in this generation where we think that we can be a master over something that we have not done. We think we can teach a class in something that we never completed. We think that we can usher people and lead people in something and we refuse to follow anybody. We don't want any spiritual fathers, but we want to be spiritual fathers. We don't want any spiritual mothers, but we want to be spiritual mothers. And listen, we have gotten into a place where we cannot correct that spirit. But can I share something with you? If God is going to birth the spirit of revival, it's going to come through the integral. If you think that revival is going to come without warfare, you have lost your mind. The enemy is going to fight you on every hand. He's going to fight you through the people. He's going to fight you through the news. He's going to fight you through the media. But listen, if you don't have the power to get control over yourself now, you're never going to get to where God is trying to take you. I need you to hear what I'm telling you. There are many people that are watching me right now and the Lord is saying that you are asking me to deliver you from something that you are already delivered from. You are asking me to take you out of something and you're not even in it. You're just next to it and you're next to it because it's familiar. But the Lord said the only thing that you've got to do is do like Mary Mary and put one foot in front of the other because I'm getting ready to give you power to walk over the thing that you are bound by. You are not bound by it. You are not tra entrapped in it. But the Lord said, you've got authority over it. I need to share something with somebody that's watching me. In this season, the Lord said, stop connecting yourself to individuals that will not move, that will not progress, that are transferring the energy of negativity and low self-esteem to you. At some point, you've got to make up your mind that I'm going to create an environment of movement. Somebody type, bust a move. I'm creating an environment of movement. I need to see everybody around around me moving. Listen, I need to see everybody around me winning. I need to see everybody around me going to the next level. Can I tell you something? In this season, I need to be connected to people that are constantly in motion. The Bible said that the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. Whenever the Spirit of God stretches out in the midst of a people, there is movement. You cannot stay where you are. And the Lord said, you cannot stay there. Because if you get stuck where you are, the enemy is going to suffocate you and destroy you in a place that wants to sustain you but does not have the power to take you to the next dimension. I need you to hear me. The Lord said that what I'm doing in your life is going to require divine prophetic movement. And I want you to catch this. It's going to require movement. I feel that in the spirit. It's going to require movement. The Lord said you can't get stuck there because 
process where you've been working all your life. It's going to require movement. It's going to require that you are willing to come after me. And I'm not going to be in the place, in the thing, in the relationship that I once was in. I'm moving into a new place. Why? Because if I stay here, you're going to stay here. So the Lord said, I've got to move in order to maneuver you into your protection watch this your prophetic destiny I hear the Lord saying there's about five people watching me right now and you think you don't have the power to survive outside of that relationship to survive outside of that marriage but the Lord said I'm shifting you out of that relationship I'm shifting you out of that abusive situation I'm shifting you out of that traumatic situation you will not embarrass yourself you will not embarrass your family you will not embarrass your kids the Lord said I'm getting ready to take you to another dimension somebody say shift I need to tell you something the spirit of the Lord spoke this to me the spirit of the Lord spoke this to me the Lord said that there are many people that are trying to watch this manipulate movement there are many people that are trying to manufacture movement and the Lord said it is not movement that can be manufactured in the flesh it is movement that can only be manufactured in the spirit now what am I trying to tell you is that in this season the Lord is saying that what I'm talking about as it pertains to movement is not just a physical geographical location location but it is a location in the spirit you can no longer win battles operating from here the Lord said I'm getting ready to shift you to here now some of you are not going to receive this but the truth is is that for most of us that are watching me by Facebook live if you try to accomplish it by way of your bloodline it won't happen if you try to accomplish it by way of what you were taught it won't happen if you try to get the victory by way of uh, 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 the inheritance or, or the lack thereof of your family Family, it's not going to happen for you it is only going to happen through the spirit for you it is only going to happen supernaturally that is the reason why they can get away with stuff that you cannot get away with and the reason why they can get away with stuff that you can't get away with is because the only way it's going to happen for you is in the spirit there are too many things in your blood God I praise you there are too many things in your bloodline that are fighting against you that are warring against you that are trying to get you to give up that are trying to get you to quit that are trying to get you to cave in. And some of you don't realize that the Lord is taking you into revival because he is upgrading your anointing. Listen to this prophet. He is upgrading your anointing. The Lord is saying that the warfare that is in your spirit that is fighting against you, the only way that you're going to get the victory is you're going to have to get it on your face. Your business is not going to grow just by going to seminars. Your business is going to grow on your face. The Lord said that your money is not going to grow just by uh, you investing in the stock market invest but the Lord says stay on your face because what I'm trying to do for you it is only going to come by you having the right posture and the right position for me to release that power in your life can I tell you something when you have been called of God and you are carrying an authentic anointing the only way that you can give birth God I praise you the only way that you can release and I'm talking about you I'm not talking about sister watermelon in the church that's had a nasty attitude and been there for 30 years I'm talking talking about you. I'm not talking about Brother Cantaloupe that's been born and raised in the church, fifth generation Church of God in Christ and still don't know how to talk to people and don't care about what God is saying and not trying to go to the next level. Can I tell you something? There are some people that come to church and they come to church just because they want to have spiritual orgasms. They want to feel better. They want to feel good. They want a good feeling. They want a tingling in their body. Can I tell you something? Can I share something with you? That is nothing but you operating through the same lens of how you accomplish intimacy in the bed and bringing it into the pew. The Lord is saying, I'm trying to give you something deeper than just a hold on a little while longer and it's going to be all right. God is saying, what I'm doing in your spirit uh, is I'm going to show you what you're holding on to. I'm going to teach you how to hold on. I'm going to teach you where you need to stand while you're holding. I'm going to show you what you need to let go of while you're holding on. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to give you divine instruction in this season. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm talking to a remnant of people that are listening to me right now and the Lord said I'm getting ready to do something for you that cannot be accomplished in flesh the only way it's going to happen is you've got to stay on your face everything that's fighting you is fighting you to get you off your face everything that's fighting you is fighting you to get you out of the right posture but the Lord is saying if I'm going to do something in the earth that's never been done before through you I'm going to have to take you into a seek that you have never had before I'm going to have to take you into a 
level of separation. And listen, I got to say this. There are many of us in the body of Christ. We don't want to be separated. We don't want to be consecrated. We don't want God to pull us away from people. Because watch this. The enemy will use your rejection and your abandonment issues to tie you up in toxicity that is designed to retard your growth and keep you trapped on a certain level. Do you not know that there are people in the body of Christ, most of the body of Christ, across this country and around this world that have been trapped in a dimension, a level for the last 15 years and don't even know it. They have been trapped in understanding. They have been trapped in a consciousness, in a perspective and don't even know it. They are literally fighting an invisible enemy. They are fighting with invisible battlegrounds that are operating in their minds because somebody has not come with the power of the prophetic word to cut down those strongholds in their head and reveal to them the authority that you have. The thing that you are crying about is secretly scared of you and it is afraid that one of these days you are going to wake up and realize who you are the authority you have and the power you have you will no longer be trapped in paradigms that have kept you stuck that have kept you bound that have kept you trapped but the lord said that there is a sword of the spirit that is coming forth from you and the lord said it is going to revive you before you can revive them i must revive you and the only way for me to revive you is i've got to retrain your seek if i keep hiding where you are accustomed to. If I keep going where you are accustomed to, then you will become addicted to the routine. Some of us have faith in faith and not faith in God. We have faith in the system. We have faith in the order and faith in the structure. But God is saying, I'm getting ready to rise up a new generation and it's not coming from long skirts and doorlies and big old wide hats. In this season, it's coming from a people that are going to fight the good fight of faith. It's coming from a people. It's coming from a generation. Can I Oh, Lord, I pray sure. Can I tell you something the Lord told me in a dream uh, uh, three nights ago? The Lord spoke to me in a dream, and the Lord said to me that I am getting ready to flood every powerhouse location with millennials and Gen Z. God said that Gen Z is coming. God said that millennials are coming. God said they're coming by the hundreds. They're coming by the thousands. And the Lord said they're coming. All types of races, all types of orientations, all types of gender identities. But what they will have in common is that they are carrying what I am doing now. They are carrying where I am now. The Lord said they all looking this way and I done moved over here. But the Spirit of God said, even though they're not looking in your direction now, by the time I get finished, I feel God here, by the time, I get finished doing what I'm about to do by the time I get finished processing you by the time I get finished preparing you there is going to be a release in this generation like you've never seen before and God is saying I just need somebody that does not mind seeking me that does not mind creating a culture of prayer that does not mind laying on your face I need somebody that will be an evangelist and a parking lot. I need somebody that ain't hungry for a platform, that are not hungry for a title. Some of you all are chasing title because you think position is power, but the Lord is saying it ain't in the position that you have in the church, but it's in the position that you have in your house, and that position is one on your face. The Lord is saying you will not be a public success and a private failure. You will not be somebody with a platform, but you don't have victory in your mind. You're going to have it in your mind and in your bank account. You're going to have it in your bank account and in your body. You're going to have it in your body and on the platform. The Lord said, I'm raising up integral people. I feel the Lord here. The Lord said, I'm raising up an integral people. People that will fight the good fight of faith. People that said, I'm not going to lie and keep on hiding. And listen, some of you all are listening to this word. I picked up two of you in the spirit. The Lord is saying, if I'm going to give you authority you got to come out the closet you ain't gonna listen listen not, not, some of you ain't gonna shout on that but listen what we are so used to is fake church uh, and we so used to people sitting up here and you got a first lady but you secretly sleeping with all the men in the back of the church uh, the lord is saying if i'm gonna give you real power you gonna have to stop lying you cannot uh, operate in a spirit of a lie uh, and operate in kingdom of poverty whenever you 
feel the need to lie, you believe that you are inadequate for your present circumstance. Anybody that lies feels the need to perform, prove, or please in order to exist where they are. If I am where I'm supposed to be, why do I need to lie to stay there? If I am where I'm supposed to be, the only thing I need to do is walk in the truth. The Lord said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Can I tell you something? When you know who you are and you understand what God is about to take you, you ain't got to lie to nobody. Look at your neighbor say, I'm not lying anymore. Tell somebody, say, I refuse to lie. I'm not coming out of a pandemic and almost lost my life. Came out of a pandemic and you think that I'm going to come all the way here, walk through the valley of the shadow of death and keep on lying. The devil is a liar. I'm not going to pretend to be anything. The Lord said that you don't have to be somebody you're not in order to lead this next revival. You don't have to become something you're not in order to lead this next revival. God said, I'm getting ready to take everything that makes up the uniqueness of who you are and use it to bless people. Do you not know that until you refuse to be somebody else, there are some people that will never access God. You are a gate and a portal. You are a gate and a portal. And as long as you are in a lie, you are not just trapped in the closet. You are trapped in a gate. And people that are tied to your deliverance cannot get out. God is not trying to use your version of Juanita Bynum. God is not trying to use your version of Bishop T.D. Jakes. God is trying to use you. And there are some people that cannot come until you get in place. Look at somebody say, get in your place, baby. Get in your place. The enemy's trying to fight. I feel God here. Trying to fight you from getting in your place. But get in your place. It is now in our text now uh, that Elisha, uh, he has a company of prophets. Uh, and the Bible said uh, that he understood the times uh, and the seasons. Uh, and he said, I'm getting ready to be elevated. Uh, can I share something with you? He understood that he was getting ready to be caught up into a new dimension and a new realm. Now, this is what is important. The reason why you need to be elevated is because in order for people to receive what you have, if you don't go to the next level, your mantle cannot be released upon the people that are serving under you. There were some people following you that you don't even know about. There were some people that are following after you, that are looking at you. Can I tell you something? Do you not know that there are some people that the only reason they're surviving this pandemic, I'm talking about you, that are surviving this pandemic is because of the scriptures you keep posting on your Facebook, the encouragement you keep putting in your story, that there are some people watching you and saying, baby, if he can make it, I know I can make it. There are some people watching you that are saying, baby, if she can keep on praising God, I know I can make it. Now see, some of you are looking and you're saying, you don't understand the apostle. I'm under an attack. I'm not in any position to help anybody. I'm going through a circumstance and I can barely get my own mind together. Why is it that God wants to use me and I'm going through what I'm going through? Baby, you a prime candidate. Why wouldn't God use you? The Lord is using you because sometimes your storm is intercession for a generation that is behind you. In other words, they can't get themselves out. But if I can put you in it, the Lord said everybody attached to it, even people you don't even know yet, the moment I bring you out, I'm going to bring them out. The Lord says sometimes you are going through warfare in your mind that has nothing to do with you, but it is a generational devil that's fighting people in your bloodline, that's fighting people that are even going to come after you. But the Lord said if I can break it off of you, then I know I can set a generation free. You are not being punished. You are being trusted. The Lord said I trust you that you can handle the persecution. You can handle the trial. You can handle the storm. You can handle the weight and say though he slay me yet will I trust him. I will trust in the name of the Lord. Can I tell you something? Lord I praise you. There are some people that are watching me right now and you're saying God I feel like it's too heavy and I feel like it's too much but the Lord is saying you are in a place where I'm getting ready to elevate you in the spirit but before I can elevate you in the spirit you got to elevate your sight. Somebody say elevate your sight. Elevate your sight so that you can see what I'm really doing. Elevate your sight so that you can discern what I'm really doing. Elevate your sight 
so that you can know how I'm really moving. The Lord said, elevate your perspective. Elevate your sight. Elevate your vision. Elevate the way that you see it. Before I pull you out of it, you've got to elevate your perspective because the moment you are in the trial, but you no longer see the trial as persecution or pain, but you see it as power. But look, the Lord says, now I'm going to take you to the next level. The Lord says, now I'm going to take you to the next dimension. The Lord says, now I'm going to take you to the next place. Not because, watch this, you have been brought out of it, but because I brought your mind out of it before I brought your body out of it. The Lord said, you cannot come out of it until I bring your body out of it, your mind out of it. The Lord said, you cannot come out of it until I bring your spirit out of it. I need intercessors. You cannot come out of it until I bring your spirit out of it out of the, the trial and the tribulation that you are in, I am bringing your mind out. Firstly, I need you praying right where you are. The Lord said that in this season, in order for me to take you to the next level, and in order for me to take you to the next dimension, I've got to begin to move you in a place to where you are no longer trapped by what you see, but you are moving in the dimension of faith. You are moving in the realm of faith. Can I tell you something? Elijah said, you all have been following me for years. You all have been following me for years. He said that you are accustomed to the way that we have done things. You are accustomed to the way that we have operated. But do you not discern that it is my time to go to the next level? Now watch this. What some of the prophets said that if it is your time to go to the next level, maybe we need to go do something different. But can I share something with you? When you are truly attached to someone in the spirit, you understand that when they're going higher, you're going higher. Elijah's said I refuse to be moved away from your side I refuse to transition into another season until I have power I refuse to transition into another dimension until I'm walking in the level of authority that is necessary for my destiny can I share something with you the spirit of the Lord said what I'm getting ready to do in this season of your life is I'm getting ready ready to elevate your sight stop looking in a low place your answer is not going to come from a man your answer is not going to come from your connections your answer is not going to come from the realm you've been operating in it's not going to come from your supervisor it's not going to come from your boss but it is going to come from a higher place I hear the Lord saying listen there are too many people in the body of Christ that are wanting to be elevated it with titles and positions but they have not learned that the way up is down before I can elevate you in the ecclesia I must bring you low to your face the Lord said I can't elevate you because if I elevate you pride will kill you if I elevate you your insecurities will destroy your ministry if I elevate you now your rejection issues will run all the sheep away God is saying I can't elevate you yet until you learn how to get on your face and begin to seek me you're going to see me when you shut your eyes you're going to go higher when you go low and you're going to hear me when you shut your ears from the naysayers and the negative opinions that keep you trapped in your insecurities you're going to hear me you're going to see me but the Lord said it ain't in the natural you looked at the wind and it was not there you looked at the earthquake and it was not there but I hear the Lord say see me in the spirit open up your eyes and see me in the spirit realm. See what I'm doing. Why do I have to do this to you? Because you're going to stand up and you're going to take a generation into another dimension and they're not going to be able to see it. They're not going to be able to hear it. They're not going to be able to feel it. And if I don't break that spirit off of you that is controlled by the people around you, you can never lead them if you are controlled by what they are controlled by. But because I break you free. I have set you free. I have trained you to be in the midst of the fire and yet praise me. I have trained you to be in the midst of the storm and yet worship me. He said, now I can trust you with some people. Now I can trust you with a department. Now I can trust you with a marriage because
because I'm getting ready to take everything that you have been through and use it in order to lead another generation of people out. I need somebody to type right now. I want you to type right there on the screen and say, see it in the spirit. I hear the Lord say, see it in the spirit. I'm getting ready to get out of here, but I've got to tell somebody something. The Bible said that Elijah was being caught up. And when Elijah, the blood was being caught up, the spirit of the Lord said that as uh, uh, he was going up, uh, he was surrounded uh, by a whirlwind in the Hebrew. A whirlwind means sore trouble. It means trouble on every side. It means trouble all around. Why is it that I'm going through fire, that I'm going through trials, that I'm going through tribulations, that I'm going through struggles, and yet the Lord is elevating me, yet the Lord is calling upon me. It would seem that I'm not qualified. It would seem that I've got too much going on. Maybe I should sit down. Maybe I should stop preaching. Maybe I should stop prophesying. If I was really anointed, then why am I struggling the way that I'm struggling? But the Lord said, you are not struggling because you're not anointed. You are struggling because I haven't got all the anointing out of you that I want. I am squeezing you. I am pressing you. I am pushing you until I pull another level out of your spirit. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying even now that what I'm getting ready to do is going to be completely supernatural. Some of you all, you don't understand why the devil fights your marriage, your relationship, the way that he does. It is because this is not a relationship so you can take Instagram pictures. This is not a relationship so you can be tagged on Facebook. But this relationship is going to transform the world because this is the first one that you brought your whole self into. This is the first one that you are walking into with full authenticity and the Lord said now I'm getting ready to merge different dimensions of who you are and present you to the world. Elijah I'm getting ready to do something. He told Elisha if you see me when I am taken from you you can have what's on my life. Listen to me. That meant uh, that whenever Elijah uh, went for a swim, uh, Elisha had to be there. Uh, whenever Elijah uh, went for a drive, uh, Elisha better be in the passenger seat. Uh, whenever Elijah uh, was going to use the bathroom, uh, Elisha better have a peephole. Uh, because whenever uh, he was going to get caught up, uh, there was going to be a release. But watch this. Uh, what literally happened, if he was elevated in sore trouble, catch this. If he was elevated and sore trouble, that implies that God will send a scandal. God will send a scandal. Listen to me, people. He will send a trial to your marriage. He will send a trial to your house. He will send a trial, a scandal to your church. And whenever the Lord allows a scandal to hit your ministry, it's because he's about to shift seats. And I'm not talking about just positions in the natural. I'm talking about positions in the spirit. Anybody that gets distracted by natural activity have their eyes in the wrong place. Let me, Nick, let me show you something. So Nick, I want you to turn and face, face the camera. You got to recognize this in this season. Some of you all have not learned how to train your intercession. When you are an intercessor, you become emotionally attached to other people's circumstances. And sometimes if you are not trained, you will exalt emotions above logic. And so your sight will become blinded by what you feel. So the trick of the enemy is because he knows he can't come directly to you. Because you done got some faith in your spirit. You done got a praise in your spirit. You done learned how to plead the blood and holler out the blood. Because he knows he can't come directly to you. He will surround you by people that are assignments. But you cannot take on the emotional disposition of your assignment. You have to know how to be connected but still be separated. 
You have to know how to be connected. But even if they don't continue to go after the glory, I'm not getting caught up in what they feel. I got to keep moving in faith. And see, some of you all, this is the reason why you keep going in these seasons alone. I can't call nobody. They want to talk to me. You keep going in seasons alone because the Lord is saying, I keep bringing you into connections and relationship, but you don't know how to balance what you feel from them with what I'm showing you in the spirit. And you have allowed what was designed to be an assignment to become an assassin. Because in your spirit, you have not learned how to balance what the Lord is revealing to you. I can't, I can't lead him and be controlled by what he's feeling. Even if, even if he says something that I don't like, I can't allow my personal feelings about what he said to distract me because if a trial comes and I get distracted by the trial I'm saying to God you can't trust me with the revival if I get distracted by what I see in the natural I can't see what God is doing in the spirit and you don't get permission to call yourself a visionary if you control by what's in your face can I share something with you this is for about 30 people watching me and, and in this room too. Some of them are not your friends. They are your assignments. And you have allowed your loneliness to make you put people in seats they're not supposed to be in. And what the enemy wants to do is get your bitterness and rejection and anger because Find you some people that's going to love you like you love. Find you some friends that's going to do you like you do. No, they can't. Your assignment is to show them love. Well, where's my poor coming from? A submitted place. Your assignment, we social distance I'm just touching this back. Your assignment can't be your friend. Some of you are bitter and broken because you're looking for something from people that they, they can't give. Listen, Elijah had a conversation and the, the people around him said, well, we need to go do something else because Elijah's about to come. Elijah said, y'all go ahead and do whatever you want to do. It's not even so much that I'm following Elisha. I'm after what's in him. I'm seeking for something. There's something deeper that I need. Maybe you wanted to be a part of a club. I didn't come here for that. Maybe you wanted to be at church home so you can have matching t-shirts. I didn't come here for that. I came here because there's something in the belly of the man of God that I need. That if I don't get it, I'll never go to my next level. The Bible said that the next place they went to was into Jordan. And Jordan meant to go down. It's a season of temporary demotion. Some of you can't go to the next level. There's some people watching me right now. And God's called you to be in this church. And you don't want to come because the lie that you tell the room that you're in keeps you in the position you're in. If you tell them what you're attracted to, they're going to remove you from over the music department. But the Lord is saying, what I'm trying to do for you is greater than a position in the natural. What I'm trying to do for you in this season may require temporary demotion for permanent elevation. Listen to me. Elijah and Elijah looked around. And he said, well, there, there was hundreds of us. That was just me. But it was in that moment that when the greatest storm came, a whirlwind, a trial, when the storm showed up, a release showed up. Depending on the direction of your eyes will determine what you access from the storm. There is something called the eye of the storm. And it is a position of perspective the Spirit of the Lord said that if 
you can shift the direction of your eyes, if you can shift the direction of your eyes, and some of you all that I'm talking to right now, you used to have a strong prayer life. You used to seek, you used to be on fire for God. And the Lord took you up and elevated you a little bit. You lost it because you got caught up in the church mess, the drama, the foolishness. The Spirit of the Lord told me to tell you this. Whatever consecration you had to get there, you have to keep it to stay there. Shift the direction of your eyes. I'm calling for people that will seek after me that will seek me like never before, that will begin to seek me until I break your posture, that will seek me until you cannot be humiliated, that will seek me until you can handle rebuke and correction, that will seek me until if they cut you off, you don't even know it because you're on your face. The Lord said, I'm getting ready to elevate you. I want you to start praying in the spirit. I, I really sense this Lord. If you are in a season of elevation, if the Lord has revealed to you that you are in a season of elevation and you're watching me live, I want you to just type elevation, elevation. Those of you that are in here, if you are in a season of, of divine elevation and you sense the Lord about to take you to another level, the Lord is saying before you can have elevation, you must have revelation. And before I can take you from revelation to elevation, you must have evolution. You have not tapped the next level until you are stepping into something, Elisha. And you say, God, I've never done this before. Some of you right now, I can sense there's five people right now. You've even done ministry, you just haven't done it in your truth. And the Lord is saying, the enemy wants you to abandon your post. He's trying to convince you you made a mistake and you're going the wrong way. But the Lord is saying, I need you to endure the moment where most give up. And most people that will counsel you, like they did Elijah, would say, well, you need to go do something. This is, I, that don't make no sense. If I was you, baby, I would just, I would, I just would, that's just too much. You're chasing the coin, but you're not chasing the call. And it's throwing you off course, love. I want you to hear this prophet. Some of you watching me live right now. You are chasing what is familiar. And the Lord is trying to move you in another dimension, and move you into a deeper direction, a deeper seat. This season is going to require a complete stripping. This season is going to require a complete stripping. I hear the Lord say, how bad do you want where I'm about to take you? Will you seek me for it? Will you deny what you've known for? Brittany, lift up your hands. Will you surrender to what I'm doing in your life? Not a theoretical idea, but when you surrender to it, that means I'm okay with this cost. I'm okay with this cost. okay with this transition. Some of you, this has hit your family. It's, it's hit your family. And you're very close to your family. And you're now in a season where you are having to literally seek God alone. I'm not talking about how many people are around you. Because you can have a whole lot 
lot of people around you and they're not doing what you're doing. A seek is being birthed in you today. Seek me, says the Lord. Walk towards me, Brittany. Seek me, says the Lord. Seek me. I release a fresh anointing upon your life today. Seek me, says the Lord. Seek me. Your problem is deeper than any person can be. And nobody can be everything that you need but God. God has called you to transform the world in a generation. Even in this movement, God has called you to do a great work. I want you to hear me. The capacity that you have is too much for some of the people you connected to. And the Lord said, you have wrestled with this and you've resisted it and it taunts you and it haunts you and it torments your mind and the enemy has convinced you that hurt, pain, rejection, and loneliness is your portion, but the devil is a liar. The Lord has called you, woman of God. You are not weak. I break these word curses. Some of these word curses came from someone you love very dearly. This, these, words, these word curses came from your father and he did not know that he was speaking some of those word curses over you. And it has messed with your self-esteem. You never feel good enough. You never feel smart enough. And the Lord is saying, it's almost like the enemy has postured you to regurgitate correction. Because when you hear it, you, it reinforces fear. But the Lord set you free from that tormenting spirit. The Lord said, seek me. And I will fill you with courage. Woo! Seek me and you will be courageous. Seek me. The Lord said, seek me like you've never sought me before. The Lord said, I want to be your bread. I want to be your water. Seek me. The Lord is saying, I'm calling you out. And all of you that are in here, I want you to hear me. All of you that are in here. And for those that are watching and, and you, you know, you, you good Judy's with Lori Lightfoot, we in compliance in here, okay? But those of you that are in here, I want you to hear me. If you're in this room right now, and I know prophetically what I'm saying, you will never, ever fit in with the average Christian. I'm talking about people that really do love God. Your seek has to be on another level. The Lord said, you must elevate your sight that you can see what I'm doing in the midst of you. I want everybody in here to make one of your new prayer declarations on a daily basis. I elevate my sight that I may see what you are doing in the midst of us. Not just me, us. Because if I stay where everybody else is, I can't see what you're doing. Because the average Christian can't see. They can't. So God raises up seers. I can see what God is doing. You're a seer. You've been called to see. I anoint you. Whoa, my God, my God, my God. Lord, let the fire of God be hers right now. May she honor your name greatly. May she reveal your identity in the earth realm. Jesus. Let your fire be hers. Jesus Christ. Something needs to happen right now. Those of you that are watching, I want you to start telling the Lord yes right there. And listen, it's not something you just say out of your mouth. It's got to be birth here. Let it come up out of here, out of there. 
out of there, out of there. Handa baba si de 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 andosa. Ila la 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 bo kosi de diasa brakanda de diasa. Let it be birthed out of there. Let it be birthed out of here. Let it be birthed out of your belly. Come on, give me this camera. Let it be birthed out of your belly. Let it be birthed out of your spirit. A seek. Come on, yes, a real one in your house right now. What am I saying yes to? Being a vessel of revival. The Lord is calling for seekers. If you are a Christian and you have always found yourself in seasons of looking around the room at church and you could sense that the hearts of the people were postured against God. If you are a Christian and you've seen in seasons where you've looked around and you could literally feel the backslidden state of the body of Christ. Every revival is born from the womb of those that have discontentment. Every revival is born from the womb of those that have discontentment. They are not comfortable anymore with just choir rows and, 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 and marching in and, and first Sunday Holy Communion. The Lord said, I'm about to raise up those that say God or nothing. Give me the authentic oil of God or I don't want it. Give me the real power of God and you can keep it. If God ain't showing up, I don't want to be there. The Lord said, I'm raising up a relentless generation because in Powerhouse Global and in many of your churches, pastors that are watching this and that are going to go back and watch this live, in your churches, God wants to fill them with Gen Z, millennials, and generations that are to come. Those are the people he's after. And you trying to protect systems and structures that they don't care about. They don't care about it, they don't know about it, they didn't grow up in it, they didn't grow up in church. And until we change our system and structure, we will only regurgitate people. The body of Christ ain't growing. The church ain't growing. We're not, we're just recycling members. You used to be over here, now you're over here. You used to be there, now you're over here. You used to be over there. You don't like this anymore, now you're going over here. We're not growing. We're not growing until prostitutes are fresh out the bed and they walk in this church and they are birthed out in the realm of the spirit. We are not growing until people who have never stepped foot in the church don't know nothing about church fall in love with a risen savior called Jesus Christ and a passion is born in them to seek and that passion becomes contagious like the woman at the well I don't know about you but that's what I want and I tell you what I saw at Habitation what I saw happening at Habitation this year in Exousia Nick I saw it in the spirit the Lord told me if they're looking for praise breaks we have praise breaks if they come in just to shout and have a good time, we're going to shout and we're going to have a good time. He said, but this year, he said, get some areas on the walls ready because they're going to be filled with crutches of people that could not walk. I'm telling you, some of you were with us in Chicago a couple of weeks ago and the Lord healed missionary Claire, but I'm telling you, God is about to perform more miracles than I miss. Out of everybody that got sick with COVID, out of all of our congregations, not one person has died. Out of everybody that's been under attack, not one person. And listen, that I, I, I'm saying that unto the glory of God. I understand that there are things happening, but I give God the glory. I don't understand it. I don't know why. But I am just convinced that God is getting ready to do something great through Powerhouse Global. The Lord said miracle signs and wonders. I looked in the spirit realm, and I saw us even here on the first night with Pastor San Franklin, and I saw sporadic miracles breaking out. I heard screams and cries of people who literally have not walked in years. People who at the point of death and the Lord revived their bodies. I saw that breaking out in this room. And the Spirit of the Lord said, it is not going to be done through the power of personalities. It's going to be done through the power of those that seek me. For if you seek me, you shall find me. Don't seek me with your eyes. Seek me with your heart. <laughs> he didn't say search for me with your eyes well Lord I'm looking at my bank account he didn't say search me with your eyes 
Well, God, I'm looking at the news. He didn't say, search for me with your eyes. He says, search for me with your heart. That's your posture. That's your government, the seat of your will. Seek me till I turn over your will. Seek me until I break your posture. Seek me until you want me more than you want your next breath. God is saying, y'all done locked me out and I can't get in because I gave you dominion. And I'm not talking about the church. I'm talking about the earth realm. <laughs> he said, I just need somebody that's willing to be a gate. Anybody want to be a gate? Anybody want to be a gate that would give the earth realm access to the authentic power and presence of God? It's only going to happen when we seek. It ain't in the robe. It ain't in the collar. It ain't in the tab. It's in the seek. It ain't in the title. It's in the seek. If you don't call me a bishop, call me a seeker. The Lord said it's in those that seek, that seek my face, that delight to know my ways. To them I shall give my glory. I see many young men coming into this location. I see a lot of men. I see, um, and I, I, just, I just need to be me, okay? A lot of the men that are about to come into this location are not same gender loving. They're about to come in here because they have a seek in them. And the seek outweighs racism, homophobia, prejudice. Azusa was founded upon seekers and their seat was greater than the fact that they were children of slave owners and slaves. Their seat was so strong that God broke the powers of racism. May the Lord raise up seekers. Father, I ask you to anoint those that are watching, but specifically anoint these that are in here right now, God. Oh my God, anoint these that are in here right now. God, that as the harvest comes in here, I see them coming through those doors, God, those black doors. Hungry. Hungry and not for church. They're hungry for God. Hungry, not for religion. They're hungry for God. Hungry, not for musicals. They're hungry for God. They just want to soak in the presence of God. They just want a room where they can get the pure, unadulterated word of God, where they can see the glory of God, where they can see the hand of God, where they can see the miracle signs and the wonders. And the Lord said, will you let this be that room? Will you let this be that room? Pastor Jody, will you let that be that room? Pastor Tebedee, will you let that be that room? Let that be the room. Let this be the room that is a portal between heaven and earth. Let me be the one that is a gate that releases people into prophetic destiny, releases people into power. Let us be that church. Let your fire come upon all of them. Let the fire of God be theirs. I'm calling the church on a fast. For seven days, I want everybody beginning tomorrow to eat one meal a day. Eat one meal a day for seven days. And some of you all already heard this in the spirit realm. For seven days. I was here last night with a, a prophet that actually sits on the school board an elderly woman, and she was here with me last night to about midnight, we were here, and the fire of God came back in my office. And this woman started out the conversation trying to convince me that homosexuality was a sin. By the end of the conversation, the fire of God came all over her, and she said, I'm gonna fast, I'm gonna seek God, I'm gonna pray. She said, because there's something in this room that I need to be connected to and I don't understand it wealthy woman and the Lord said that what y'all trying to accomplish with arguing I'm going to do it through the glory of God because you can argue 
theology all day, but you cannot argue miracles, signs, and wonders. You cannot argue the authentic anointing. And when you're trying to convince me I need to be delivered, but the anointing on me sets you free from bondage you've been in for 50 years, you cannot argue with that. The argument is over. Stop arguing and start walking in the anointing. For it is the anointing that destroys every yoke. It is the anointing that destroys every yoke and removes every burden. Seven days. Woo! Everybody connected to Powerhouse Global. Tag them, post this. Seven days. One meal a day. Starting Monday. We want to do this all the way till Sunday. We will break the following Monday at midnight. We cross over into Monday. One meal a day. And I'm going to tell you why we're doing one meal. Next week, I'm going to really get into this. Next week, I'm going to, uh, Lord willing, have two guest prophets with me. And I'm going to really teach next week. Because the Lord wants me to teach on the components of revival. It requires unity. Pentecost happened when they were all with one accord. So you know how the enemy fights Pentecost? He creates isms and schisms within the church. Isms and schisms. But the Spirit of the Lord said that the gates of hell will not prevail against what I'm birthing and releasing out. One meal a day for seven days. I promise you it's going to be worth it. There's some of you, the Lord is going to tell you to do uh, a more intense fast. Some of you, the Lord has told you There's some of you, the Spirit of the Lord says, I'm going to call for you to do a more intense fast. Oof. I see angelic hosts. The Spirit of the Lord said, there will be angelic visitation. Everything you've been decreeing, Every day during offering time. <laughs> Open heavens, earth invaded, storehouses unlocked and miracles created. Dreams and visions, angelic visitations. Some of you are going to have dreams. <laughs> dreams and visions are being released to you right now. Some of you are going to have dreams this week. They're going to be prophetic dreams of instruction. The Lord is going to open up your eyes. Visions, insight are going to take place over your life in this season. A release. The Lord is elevating your anointing. 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 The Lord said it's, it's, a, it's a deeper call and you've been hovering over it for years but afraid to go into it because you were afraid of what it would cost you. You were afraid of what people would say about you. You were afraid but the Lord said I'm calling you into a deeper place. Seek me. Seek Seek me, seek me, seek me, seek me, seek me, seek me. You will find me if you search with all of your heart. This is not a partial thing. This is not a halfway thing. This is a all of nothing season. You tried it every other way. The Lord said, try me once, saith the Lord of hosts. Try me. Put your all into this. Put all of yourself into this. I will repay, restore. You will recover. You will be rejuvenated. You will birth revival. We decree it to be so. Let's lose the prophetic seed now of forty dollars. Lose the prophetic seed now, forty dollars. Forty dollars. Let's sow a seed of forty dollars. Those of you that can, sow that seed of forty dollars. Zebaba, before we go. Whoa, Habitation shall be a conference of miracles, signs, and wonders. 
Yes, I love these posts of what I'm seeing. We are seers. We are seers. I want you to sow that $40 seed right now. Ooh, something's happening in this room, y'all. Something is happening in this room. Something is happening in this room. God said this will be a house of the unusual. Some of you all in this room, it is no longer time to be to be cute when you come in here. When we come back together, God is going to open up the eyes of your children. The youth's eyes shall be open. Some of them are going to see angels in the middle of the encounter. You're going to see them reaching for something and you're not going to know what it is. They're going to see angels. They're going to see angelic hosts. Seers. Lord, open up our eyes. 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 Let the seekers arise. Let the seekers arise. Let the seekers arise. Somebody tag Zavetta. Tag Zavetta. Go sow that, that $40 seed. Somebody tag Zavetta. Zavetta, are you here? Are you here? Somebody tag Zavetta Johnson. Zavetta, the Spirit of the Lord says unto you that I'm getting ready to reveal why you were born. There's a teaching grace that's coming upon you. The Lord is going to breathe upon teachers in this house. The Lord is going to raise up many teachers. Uh, tag Tatiana in this too. Tag Zavetta and tag Tatiana. Christina. The Lord's going to raise you three up to be teachers for the harvest. To be teachers for the harvest. There's a teaching grace that's about to hit Powerhouse Chicago. For the harvest that's coming in. For the harvest is plentiful. For the hunger that comes for. There's a teaching oil that's about to come upon you. You're going to teach with fire. You're going to teach with signs and wonders. You will not teach without power. But you will teach them. And as you teach them, I will perform. As you teach them, I will reveal. As you explain, I will release. As you teach my people, I will open up their eyes and give them revelation. For the Lord said that a sound is about to be released from Powerhouse Global. But before the sound comes, there must be light. For light tra travels faster than sound waves. The Spirit of Grace says that you will release the light and as you release the light the light will be followed by the sound without light there is no direction for the sound it will not be strange fire but it will be fire birth from the spirit of grace fire birth from the spirit of god you will teach you will explain and as you explain they will gain access as you explain i will release there's a teaching grace there's a teaching grace that's coming upon God's people. There's a teaching grace. Somebody tag Leisha. Somebody tag Leisha right now. Somebody tag Leisha. Leisha. There's a teaching grace that's coming upon you. There's a teaching grace that's coming into your life. Leisha. There's a teaching grace that's coming upon your life. There's an anointing that's coming upon your life. Some of you all are coming back from this pandemic with new anointings. You're coming back from this pandemic with fresh fire. Walk towards me, Nick. You're coming with fresh fire. Fresh fire is being released to you. Fresh fire. Lift up your hands. I'm not going to touch you. But fresh fire be released to him. Fresh fire be released to him. Let the fire of God be his. Let the fire of God be his. Let the fire of God be his. 
is. The Spirit of the Lord says, I call you out of your comfort zone. I call you out of fear. I call you out of complacency. You're going higher. You're going higher. And you will not be distracted. You will not be distracted. Separate yourself, says the Lord. Separate yourself. Even in the house, separate yourself. No longer get caught in the mess. No longer get caught in the mischief. You are greater. You are anointed. You are called. There is a fire in you. They are waiting on you. They are waiting on you. You will not be afraid. But the Lord said, I'm giving you the capacity to love yourself. I'm freeing you from the word curses that came from your father. From the word curses that came even from your other male relatives. They picked on you and talked about you. But the Lord sets you free from feeling uncomfortable, from feeling insecure. They said, why is he around those women, all those women? But the Lord said, it is because I'm giving you grace, a womb in the spirit. I'm giving you a womb and you will birth and you will break forth. You will birth. That hurt is coming out now. Bring a bucket. That hurt is coming out now. That bondage is coming out now. Somebody get a bucket. That hurt is coming out now. That bondage is coming out now. The Lord sets you free by his fire. The Lord sets you free for his glory. The Lord delivers you. The Lord raises you up. The Lord calls you into deeper dimensions. Into deeper realms. Fire. 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 Say, Baba, when you are told. Say, Baba, when you are called. 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 Reveria sorre agade, nava kare ya sorre, reveria sorre beke, zira baba ya sorre. There's a fresh anointing being released now. Naya, Naya, Naya. The Spirit of the Lord says to you, Naya. The Spirit of the Lord says to you, Naya. Get the dancers together. Start meeting with them, talking on the phone. The Lord said at least once a month. The Lord said there's some prophetic videos, some things I want you to watch. I want you to become engulfed in. Because the Lord said the fire dance ministry must come forth in this house. Some deliverances will not happen until there is a dance that is released in this ministry. God said that there's some breakthroughs that will not come until a dance is released through the dance team, the fire dance ministry. Let's continue to sow that seed. We're getting ready to go. Wabahashiye nalaba. We're getting ready to go. We're sowing that $40 seed now. You can sow via Cash App, PayPal, uh, uh, or our website, phglobalnetwork.org. Cash sign, phglobalnetwork, or paypal.me slash uh, phglobal, I think, I'm not sure. It should be on the screen, I don't know. Um, but go ahead and sow that seed now. The Lord is doing a new thing. I'm so drunk in the spirit. We got to go. Meet us this Wednesday night. We will have on our broadcast Dr. Maya Green and Elder Jonathan Wesley. Jonathan Wesley, who is graced in both a deliverance and psychosis. He's a part of our Powerhouse Global family. Dr. Maya Green, who's no stranger to Powerhouse Chicago. She comes to our Exusia conference. She does impartation and teaches us how to deal with warfare in the high places. Uh, she's a very well-known vessel in the city of Chicago. Dr. Maya Green has worked with some of the best organizations in the world uh, and in the city. I want you to make sure you are with us this Wednesday night for a release. And we loose the supernatural anointing upon you now as even we were, whoa, holy. Ah, <laughs> As we prepare to go, we lose something upon you now. The
grace of God, the fire of God, wisdom for your assignment. We declare wisdom is your portion. I declare for you that no spirit but the spirit of the living God shall rule over your life. And I declare unto you today that the Lord elevates your sight that you may be able to see what he's doing in the midst of you. And may there be a supernatural release of divine impartation revelation in your life in this season. May you be carriers of his divine glory. And may you be postured to bring Pentecost into the earth around. May revival be your portion and the portion of all those that you have been called to lead. And for those of you that are watching us that don't have a church home, we invite you to join us now. You can send an email and we can get that on the screen to admin at phglobalnetwork.org, admin at phglobalnetwork.org, admin, A-D-M-I-N, at phglobalnetwork.org. Send an email. Tell us your name. Give us your number your, and your city. Tell us your name, your number, and your city. And we want to make sure we get you into our online class so that when we come back together, we can get you plugged into the powerhouse and you can be a part of this movement in the earth realm. We love you and we're praying for you. God, we thank you for what you're doing right now. In Jesus Christ's name, all that agree said is so. And so it is. We'll see you this Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central.